All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're ready. I got your watch list for June 5th, 2019. It is going to be an exciting one. The Dow went up about 512 points at close. It was crazy, but all of this is showing its volatility, big ups and big downs as option traders, day traders. This is what we love. So I want to make all of this stuff going on. We've been talking about it. I encourage you to go through the other watch list, but I want to make this one as digestible as possible. I want to make sure you guys are getting prepared and getting ready to act. I want to make sure you guys are getting prepared and ready to act on what's going on. So I don't want to overwhelm you with too much. So I'm going to get right into it, even down to the predictions. There was a talk by P uh, foul uh, foul. Fed Powell. Um, so that's important because we might start seeing the market even after Bullard yesterday. So that's important because now we're starting to hear more from the Fed in terms of policy. And now policy is getting introduced to this whole topic in terms of what the Fed's going to do. And last time that made the market react. And that is what we're going to talk about. The keys from the, the main theme of what I'm going to discuss here and what to expect for tomorrow, even coming into the rest of the week here is how this relates to October and November. And now, as we are watching any of this stuff, when we are looking at any of these keys, I'm looking at purely technical stuff, even though it is macroeconomic data. And what I mean by that is in between a lot of these movements, we had everything from trade war news and also what the Fed was doing with rates and the initial flattening and inversion of the yield curve. So understand this analysis is absent of that when we're looking over this so that's something to really keep in mind but here's your keys for tomorrow it's the good the bad and the ugly and what i mean by that is it is really starting to look like october november december and with that you guys are going to get the good the bad and the ugly and that means it looks like these dates but that means every single part stocks went up violently and even though the main points talked about you know october november is the decline and how it went down and even then the big bounce in January, be prepared for it all. Remember, this is its own unique event. But at the same time, when we are saying, okay, yeah, there's the big drop of October. Yeah, this did make it from top to bottom. It was a big move, but there was these big bounce and a lot of volatility in between. So again, if this does start to play out like that, it, it is exciting. So again, if you didn't take your profits and you're disappointed or this is frustrating, understand again this natural process and we've been talking about that but coming back to the keys the main thing we're going to watch and i'm going to show you guys the the main things i'm looking for but oil dollar china or dollar china oil we're really going to see which one it is but the big thing is all of these factors are at play and yes including what we're talking about with the bounce so oil starting to, it came down a little bit i had some build after hours and then it's starting to come up but it's still at that low price we saw interesting moves on it today but i'm going to show you as all this relates but this is what we were talking about a few days ago and it came true and now the the whole point behind all of this is that you know oil is has been the biggest key and, and what that's what we'll really get down to here but those other elements like china the dollar and rates are still at play but what i'm really looking for is if oil stalls so again we saw this decline here it's been now kind of holding but if it stalls between this range and consolidates i'm gonna expect the market to rip and even in the longer if it does consolidate for a long a few days that is going to be the opportunity for the market to go up or you know essentially too we should start seeing the stock market go up the dollar should go up and stocks will go up too and rates will, will do whatever they're not going to be as important but oil is going to essentially stay the same you know uh, or we might even see oil will pop and some even positive news can bring up the market and the market will move with it and it'll pop a little bit and then it'll stay and then the market will it will consolidate at higher prices but the market will continue to go up again this is all basing it on really i am bullish these next few days you know and i guess this is what's coming down to the point is that if we are reflecting any point it is looking like october and november however a specific part in november believe it or not we've kind of already lived through the october-esque aspect of this and this is what i'm looking for coming in tomorrow that oil has been the clearest move so far again out of all of the stuff we've been looking for dollar won china trade news anything so as far as how it's played out recently oil has given 
the best indicator is saying that it's going to kind of move, you know, what, what it's going to look like similarly. And essentially what this week is going to come down to is that oil could really confirm it this week. So that's why this is what I'm going to be looking for. But again, this might not happen. So my whole basis for everything I'm looking for, essentially, I think the market is going to rip uh, or it at least will hold up some of these highs or we are going to see some sort of rip. But that is based upon this confirming tomorrow and throughout the week. So I could be premature. And again, like I said, it is a unique situation that we got to look out for. So I have my game plan. But now let me show you really what I've been talking about, because this is what we brought up a few uh, days ago on the watch list. So that's why you guys got to be subscribed and be going through these. But more importantly, post your watch list below. It takes a few seconds. Just post any of the three stocks that you're looking at, one stock, whatever you want. But again, this is when we started to see some more of the decline. There's May 22nd, May 23rd. You saw the market gap down and it finally started to break lows from that point. And that was, you know, what we were really watching for. And, you know, it had to do with oil. But this is what I related it to coming into October, November, because it started to make that decline again. It did in October. We did see the first decline. But now this is where you get the capitulation point. And we've been seeing the reaction when you mix it in with China politics and in policy. But here is pretty much the important days to watch. You got to just note November 20th because you could see the, the three or four days before it, it pretty much consolidated and stalled out there. It was a big decline. Now it's held up. But that's when now the descent begins again because but the biggest thing to really compare it to is where we're at on the S&P 500. And it was pretty much at these levels that last time, November 20th, uh, it was roughly, you know, pretty much breaking down through that 272 and it was where, where we saw oil so the levels and the timing similar again that's why you have many choices to choose from do we say we've already dropped and that was october and then that was the first drop and pop it, again it's very unique and looking different so that's why i'm kind of making um, i'm kind of making a claim here i'm jumping out on, uh, on, on a limb here seeing it pretty much what happened now the next few days and this is what related to hey did we pretty much do we break lows or not and oil from the November 20th, it started to decline. And that's what pretty much leads us to this point. Because from here, we've already saw the first level stalled for a few days, had the bigger drop down. Now we're here. So now November 23rd. So you could get a kind of idea of where it is. But now oil stalls out. It pops up. That's the little, you know, pop up and consolidation. Then eventually it does come down. But like I said, remember those dates, November 20th and November 23rd, so we can see what happened on the market. This is the first one, you know, that day now oil drops for the next few days. Uh, you remember the 20th through the 23rd, oil's plummeting, hitting those new lows, and then oil is starting to stall out. And then what happens the 23rd, pretty much all the way through December 3rd and 4th, remember those dates too. But pretty much till this doesn't come down till the 17th. So it stalls and pretty much stays at this price for four or five days, comes up, then stays there at those next few days. The meanwhile, so now you could picture there oil staying the same all these days, November 30th up until December 3rd and 4th, actually. And oil makes a pop on December 3rd and 4th as we see there, but then it came down and it was showing a lot more. It was just started to get more volatile. So oil started to stay the same. And then the market started to come down with it. Even then the market hit, it broke that low, bounced, and then December 17th, 6th, 17th, 16th, 17th, 18th, everything went down with it. So did oil, as you can see here. So that's pretty much what I'm basing it on here. And again, what could have caused December, like we said, there was policy and other things going on. But if we were going to say it's looking like this technically and what I'm kind of expecting as far as the movement and kind of how it's already shaping up is pretty much how the market reacts here is if the market stays, you know, this already pretty much this will be day two. If the market starts to rip up and oil starts to stay the same or pretty, and pretty much stays within a range or even oil goes up and none of the other factors we're looking at changes and we start to see the market really start to bounce, whatever now throw in any positive news. But the whole concept is add any good news, trade, whatever, oil stays the same or slightly goes up. Watch for that that little you know disconnect for a, a week or two before we get that. And again, that, that is the nature of. That is the nature of the volatility. So so that's the point looking at it, just the SPY compared to the S&P 500 or oil, excuse me. But now take a look here at the dollar. So you see what the dollar has been doing now. 
It's been hitting highs. It's been dropping the next few days. So again, like I said, the dollar's most likely going to come up, but let's take it to those same exact dates now. So here's November 20th. Oil started to drop. That was that first drop. Remember, it just it broke that after consolidating. That was the first break. And then the dollar, you know, moving slow the next few days, it just starts going up. But the dollar pretty much starts going up. And now oil levels out and does that whole thing again, all the way even till December 4th. The dollar had volatile moves again, just like how oil looked. But then again, December 10th, 11th, 12th, 14th, the dollar kept going up, but eventually oil cracked and then everything actually came down. And this is where you could see when these events happen, it's a it's a total sell-off. That's why you think about the rates. But again, even coming back to, to the same time frame, you see rates do the same thing. So there's that there's oil breaking that low. The rates are at 3%, 3.04. So there's the 23rd. It stalls all the way. But now even then, rates are dropping at this point. But think about what's going on. Oil and the market are still going up. So again, the rates could tell us what's happening there too. But that's why, you know, so you could say rates are the key, but that's why we're using oil to let us know. But then rates, you know, break the low on the 17th and they start coming down with oil and everything. And that's what leads to that. So there's that comparison. I I really think that will be helpful. It's a, I think it's a cool thesis to watch because if it does happen, uh, you know, we would be able to make a lot of money. I think there's going to be a bigger bounce, uh, a very big bounce that we could take advantage of. And then at the same time, it's going to allow us to really reposition. So it's going to involve playing both ways, being quick. But again, it, it's the volatility. Uh, it's going to be very difficult. I recommend you paper trade on all of these, even for the stream alerts tomorrow. Uh, any of the premium sales, uh, I'm just going to say new trade activity so that you guys could, um, because they're very complex and I don't want to, uh, to complicate them or, or have people try to do the moves and, and not fully, you know, see them and, and do them. But I made a lot of trades on, on Amazon, but I'm pretty much writing my game plan out for tomorrow. Now with this plan in mind, if I do see it play out, pretty much I'm looking to cut out of some of those Amazons on, on one of the spreads I did. I just don't like the risk reward. I might end up keeping it. But then I want to buy an Amazon weekly call. I want to do these verticals. I want to do either a vertical or even a butterfly. And we'll talk about that come on stream. But then I lost on one of those other plays. I'm going to sell the Amazon weekly put. I'm going to try to pretty much snake the chain down or box it in. It's going to be a little risky. So you guys, it'll be cool to watch. Um, you know, you guys could even paper trade along too. You could even paper trade, take the reverse, see which one would have done better. But I want to do that. I'm going to look to buy Boeing calls. Uh, and then close the spread on the put I bought. And what I mean by that is I bought one leg. I just bought the put. So I want to sell puts on it as well too. And then also look into a butterfly. You guys will see how I play it. But pretty much is buying a call, selling a call, and then buying another call. It has a different risk reward. It's it's like a mix of buying and selling premium. Well, that's literally actually what it is to, to get a certain result. But the, the motto, man, buy cheap calls with time and I would sell midterm puts. That's what I'm going to be doing. But I am going to be very, very bullish coming into to this next few days if what I see happens play out. So as far as the plays, real quick, watch the chip makers. They've already been up. Some of them have a lot of room to go, but watch anything beaten down and anything that was already up. It might continue to go up. However, if it's not a strong bounce, watch, you know, like stuff like the banks were strong, transports, those could be the laggers for today. But watch the chip makers. But this is really what I want to pull out. AMD, it's been a good play. It's been wrecking it. Even the market's been going up after hours. We made a play on that. But this is even relating it to the SPY. Uh, we could even look at the just the chip maker index. You could pretty much see it's held up and it's looking a lot better. It even looks like Qualcomm. Qualcomm related to the chip makers looks more in line, but even actually related to the S&P. Qualcomm, you know, it's not it's not doing too bad. But the point here is looking at the other chip makers. That's why I had XLNX up. Even um, there's Micron. But you could start to take a look at AMD. And you notice it, it's just doing a lot better on there. So it's diverging. I really like that. We made a play on it. So keep your eyes out for it. It's been holding up. Uh, I, I think those are going to all be solid plays. Watch Boeing. Again, I'm going to go for the calls because I like the upside on it. But again, I bought the put. So I, I'm the whole play here is what I'm looking for is if anything, like last time we did see it. And, and again, think about what I'm telling you here. Last time it did have the drop or any of the of these drops, depending on what time. There's November 20th on Boeing. This It was really capitulating and it really had a massive move. And remember, uh, it, it, even in January too, it was responsible for the market. So Boeing is going to be hot. I'm going to look at the calls, but that's why I bought that put today. And this is what I was trying to explain. A lot of what I did today, 
I'm really thinking about with this these theories in mind of how to be playing now these up and down bounces in the next few weeks. That's why I'm mixing the buying calls and selling premium. But watch Boeing. I'm going to like the call side. Uh, and then again, too, we're going to see because I'm going to use that to set up the puts either with the premium to collect money or even now to even buy other puts. So again, that play uh, that play is not dead. Watch out for that. And then watch the airlines. And these were some of the ones I've been saying that were killing it. So see if they continue the trend when the market grows up. UAL, AAL, they all did great. Again, 8%. There was a lot of big movers. Watch out for that. Watch out for some of our favorite stocks. But if it had to move into continuation, keep your eye out for it. Watch General Motors. We got auto numbers. They were bad, but they went up a, a lot, especially after that, that negative news. Um, and I, I think it, it could be... A little overweighted there so I, I might want to even grab puts on that soon uh, check out Facebook as well and even Amazon they have their moves but Facebook comparatively it's been trading a little bit weirder and I kind of like that but even with the volume keep your eyes if it does start to make up these bigger ranges Facebook you know object in motion it'll it'll keep doing its thing so keep keep your eyes out for that and then lastly McDonald's it went up slightly today but not as much with the market it looks like it didn't do much even though the market went crazy but that's because it gapped up and it was already doing good you could even say it led the market however watch the days if we get another really strong day don't underestimate what it could do but again that one's going to be a slow one and we'll move out of nowhere but I'm going to leave it there, guys. Post your watch list. I'll see you in the morning. YouTube.com slash the stock market. 30 minutes before open, sometimes 30 seconds. I love you all. Get ready. Keep your head in the game, you guys. Read everything. Read between the lines. Let's go.